What's going on guys, little dog dog here, and today I'm bringing you a long-awaited quest guide for the World Wakes. This has been dubbed the most important quest, and is honestly very important for PVMing and just the basic story of the game. This quest gives you a multitude of rewards, including five new abilities, which are honestly a must-have if you plan on doing some PVM. Before we get into this quest guide if you ever have used my guides before and are coming back and are not subscribed it means a lot to me if you would subscribe like the video as well it helps suggest my videos and yeah that's enough shameless plugging let's get into the requirements all right so technically to begin and complete this quest there are no quest requirements however it is recommended maybe even strongly recommended that you complete ritual of the majorat the chosen commander the Void Stairs Back, the Branches of Darkmire, the Firemaker's Curse, all before starting this quest. Uh, you will not have access to all the rewards available from this quest if you don't complete those, and you'll also probably be a little bit confused by the story, as this is the final 5th Age quest before we enter the 6th Age, which the game is currently in. Now, there aren't any necessarily items which are needed, per se. It is possible to complete this quest as a level three i think one person's done it although it is strongly not encouraged uh, so what i'm going to recommend you bring is either ranged or magic combat gear whatever set you have is best i used magic but if you have better ranged gear go for it uh, melee is highly discouraged because a lot of the special abilities used by bosses that you're going to be fighting throughout this quest are all melee range and that's where you're going to take most of your damage so being able to fight at a distance is going to be very advantageous. Also going to recommend you bring food and combat potions. I use stat boosting potions as well as super restores to restore my prayer. And for food, as a level 131 combat, I brought along 12 rock tails. I didn't eat all of them, but why not? Better safe than sorry. And lastly, before we actually get into the quest, there are also technically no skill requirements for this quest. However, 100 plus combat is strongly recommended. Now, if you have 90 magic and 30 attack, strength, and defense, you can still probably do this quest without 100 combat. But access to good gear so you can do high damage to high level bosses is what you need to be able to complete this quest. Alright, so if you feel comfortable to start the quest, you've met all those suggested requirements, you're going to head to this location just west of the Legends Guild and speak to Orlando Smith. So once you find the correct location, talk to Orlando Smith, and he's going to tell you that he's real excited about what he's found. Choose the first chat option, what are you up to here? And he's going to explain that he has found what he believes could save his career at the Varrock Museum. Because dude has been struggling. Boss is upset. He's not doing well. Hasn't found anything cool. Uh, there's just one problem. He can't get in the door. So that's where you come in. Uh, the next chat option is one. So you need me to open the doors. You know, straight to the point. He just is going to use you to try and save his career. And he's going to tell you that, you know, you probably should be involved in this. Because it seems like it's a, a pretty big deal. This could be like some Guthixian ruins or something. Who knows? The quest dialogue is going to pop up. And uh, ignore that I haven't met all the suggested requirements. And accept the quest. Once you complete the dialogue chain here, you're going to want to go just to the east and open the door. Ancient door. You're going to get this cool little cutscene where your character shows off how cool he is. And you and Orlando Smith head right in. Now you're going to get, get a good look at the room. As you go in, Orlando Smith's going to be like, yeah, this is going to save my career. Uh, and once this cutscene ends here, you're going to have to investigate some items around that room. So we're going to move in a clockwise direction. First, we're going to investigate the inactive obelisk located in the northwest corner of the room, right here. And you're going to follow that up by investigating two stone carvings on the north wall. I ran to the further one first. Don't ask why, you know. Just, I, I, I got both of them. So there's this first one here. 
and the other one is actually closer to the inactive obelisk. Uh, it's got the carving of Juna on it. Next, you're going to want to investigate some clouded vials, which are located in the northeast corner of the room. They are a bit hard to see. They're like little potions. Uh, once you find, like, they're literally right there in the northwest corner. They're the little broken, broken bottles. Uh, just click on them to investigate. The next one is the dusty parchment to the southeast. It's on a pedestal. Orlando Smith's like, dude, don't touch that. Seriously, get your hands off. That's my career. And lastly, we're going to investigate the shattered blade, which is located on the table on the south side of the room. This is the last item that you're going to be investigating in this room. And once you complete the dialogue here, a door on the east side of your current room is going to open. Look at that. It's like I know what I'm talking about or something. All right, so because you're doing a quest and something just happened, you're going to want to go through the door that just opened. So go through that door and investigate the Gothixian statue. Now, Orlando is going to be like, yes, this is it. This is my career right here, sitting on this pedestal. This is how I feed myself. And he tries to grab it, but he's a weak little boy. He needs, he needs the hero to do it. So he suggests that you go give it a try. And uh, so you do. So you grab onto that thing. And in doing so, you set off an alarm. And another door opens, which as we know from earlier in the quest, when a door opens, you go through it. So once the dialogue is done here, you're going to go into that room. So... Proceed to the east. Now, when you get in this room, Orlando Smith's going to follow you in. He's excited. But uh, there's a bit of a problem. There's going to be like these automatons that spawn. And they are not a fan of you. So you got to fight them. Do not attack them until the dialogue ends, or you're going to be teleported back to the uh, west room and have to go through all this again. Once the dialogue ends, start shooting them in the face. You want to avoid their melee range, as their special attack can kill very quickly. I actually get hit by it. Fortunately, I do not die, but it deals something like one to 2,000 damage per tick. And dudes just start going hard. Yeah, be sure to avoid melee range. That special attack happens here in just a second. Right here. And you can see I'm taking 1 to 2k damage per tick. It was close. I was down to like 2 3,000 health. Once you kill all three, you're going to get a cutscene here where your character walks into the center of the room, which makes for a really good... Cinematics, I guess, is the best way to put it. And a shadowy figure is going to appear. That shadowy figure tries to intimidate you and be all, you know, shadowy. But if you've done any other quests out of order without doing this quest first, we already know that Slisk. Slisky? Slisk? Whatever. It's irrelevant. You know what I'm talking about. But you're going to need to stand up to him. Say, I... Little Dog Dog. You're not Little Dog Dog. I'm Little Dog Dog. But you're, it's going to be your character name. Choose the third chat option. And basically saying that you're not scared of him. He's going to be like, oh, ho, ho, ho. you're not scared of me? All right. Well, this is a little entertaining. How about we continue to talk and forward the story? Slisk, being the little trickster that he is, is like, hey, don't you think it's a little strange that you who is soon to be dubbed the World Guardian, is the only one who could open those doors. Doesn't that make you ponder a little bit? And, I mean, yeah, it should. You know, if you don't already know the future. This game really needs a quest order to make things make sense. But, I digress.
eventually, after clicking through, you're going to get to uh, the chat option. What does this mean? Pick that one. Pretty soon after that, first chat option again. What do you mean, trouble? And then the first chat option, okay then. You just agreed to a cutscene. So this man shows you a cutscene. It is just a doozy. So he goes over Guthix's edicts about how he prevented the gods from returning with those edicts. But that all of the gods' followers have been trying to get their gods back to Gilinor. He's like, all right, so ever since you activated that alarm system, this thing has been signaling to all of the gods' followers that it's time to show up and, and get to it, including him. So he's like, all right, it's, it's time to fight, basically. You got to you gotta do it. Zamorgul gets involved. He's, why not? He's like, hey, I hear that stone circle is active. Find it. Because he wants to show up. It's a bit of a long cutscene. I like lore, so, you know, I don't just hold spacebar. If you don't care for lore, hold spacebar. You just want to get back to grinding with your new fancy abilities you're going to get at the end of this quest. I get it. Uh, once you're done watching Zamorgul take his time, you're going to see that the three bosses from the God Wars dungeon emerge. So, it's actually just Zilliana that you see leaving. But it's implied that they all they all tag along. Alright, so once that cutscene's done. Slisk is, you know, doing his Slisk things. Talking about how he doesn't think Gothix needs to die. He can be bargained with. <laughs> right. Uh, choose the first chat option. What do you gain from telling me this? The next chat option is two. So how do I come into this? And he's like, well, you'll see, you know, you're probably going to help us, but you know, you could also not. And then choose the first chat option. I already know my decision because you're following a quest guide. You're going to go with my decision, which is to side with Guthix. Because Guthix is kind of a dude. He's all about balance, you know. He's the guy. Second chat option, I better get going then. And at this point, uh, the God Wars dungeon bosses are just kind of going to show up. So here's Kriara. Just flying in. Like the AVNC she, he is. I don't know. I think Kriara is a she. And Zilliana is also going to be there. Now, this seems to be lacking. Oh, there, there he is. There's Kirill. The easiest God Wars dungeon to boss to kill. Just, you know, going about his way. About to, you know, break more things. Oh, there he goes. Calm down, bud. So, Commander Zilliana and Kriara are going to be left in the room. And Zilliana is like, hey, Kriara, you're kind of a noob. Why don't you take care of the hero here? That seems like a good idea. It was at this point. It was time for a fight. So, I potioned up. Use my super restores to restore my prayer because I was not ready to use prayers. 
and you got to talk crap to Kriara. So choose a third chat option. Why are you following Ziliana then? Like, hey, you're supposed to be your own person, but you're working with uh, someone who follows Sarah Dolman. Follow that up again with a third chat option. Talk more crap if you want to get rid of me. You'll have to do it the hard way. And now it's time for a fight. So you got to fight Kriara. Uh, she's a lot easier to beat than she is in the God Wars dungeon. Uh, but there are some different mechanics than if you fight her in the God Wars dungeon. So I would recommend that you protect from missiles and avoid the tornadoes that spawn around the room. The blue ones do particularly higher damage than the yellow ones. Either way, you want to avoid them. Also, it is recommended that you avoid melee range as she has a special ability where she will call the tornadoes to her during the fight. And if you get hit by that, I mean, you're probably just done. So make sure you're staying out of melee range. See, she, she just did it right there. You can still fight her during this, this time. Um, it also sent a tornado like directly after me. I had to keep running and it kept chasing me. Not sure if this is a, an intended mechanic or if I just got real unlucky. But yeah, if you know, just keep running. It's only a yellow tornado. They do do a lot of damage though if they hit you. Well done. I killed Kriara. Hopefully you did it faster than I did because my damage per minute is terrible. After Kriara is defeated, proceed through the east door. Uh, if you need to resupply, go for it. You can pick right back up where we left off. And now you're into the room that you are probably watching this guide for. The puzzle room. The dreaded puzzles of every hard quest in this game. But lucky you. I'm going to walk you right through it. When you get into this room, Krill and Ziliana are like, Ugh, this is so terrible. I can't get this door open. And Krill's like, I can't brute force my way through it. So they are like, Ugh, how did the hero get past Kriara? I knew I should have taken care of the hero myself. But eventually they just walk past you anyways, because it's like, we couldn't get through. We're the best. How was the hero going to get through? So there's Ziliana, taking her time. They talk some trash to you real quick. Like, hey, we're going to go figure out how to get through. Once you're done with this little cutscene dialogue trap here, you're going to go to the east side of the room and activate the control panel that is just on the east side of the puzzle area. When you do that, all of Guthix's supporters, so Death, Juna, some big turtle, uh, others, I don't know their names and probably should, are going to teleport in. Mm, basically be like, what are you doing here? Choose the first chat option. Guthix is in trouble. I'm here to protect him because you're a good person. And you, want, you don't want gods to die unnecessarily, especially when they're preventing literal wars from happening. So... They're like, okay, well, if you're on our side, that's cool. But how do we go further through? Because we couldn't teleport deeper into the little dungeon area here. And it comes about that it probably has something to do with the giant puzzle that's in the center of the room. And then they leave it up to you to fix it without giving you any idea what to do. So activate the control panel once again to get into the puzzle area. And here's my quick breakdown of how the puzzle works. You have to solve four rolling boulder puzzles. The objective of these puzzles is to line up the tracks from the release point, there are four of them, until the end point. There are also four of them, so there will be four puzzles in total. I recommend that you watch me complete the first of the four puzzles before you give this a try so that you have a better understanding. Once you understand the concept of the puzzles, pause on this screen here for the solution and set your track as mine is from the release point to the end point. All the other tracks do not matter. Uh, the ball is only going to roll straight. So what you're going to do is click on track tiles one by one, starting from the release point. So on puzzle one, it is the top right to end at the end point. You cannot move special track tiles. So the ones that rotate on their own, which are the white 
balls, essentially. There's really got to be a better word for that. The yellow balls, uh, those ones when your, your boulder goes over will change the direction of the track. And you also can't move the direction of the conveyor belt track. Once you get the track aligned so that it reaches the end point, click on the release point for the first one in the top right to release the boulder. Uh, you're, there are occasional spots with gates, typically before a special tile, where you have to wait until the track is correctly aligned to open. So the track must be facing the correct direction if it's one of the white globes, or the conveyors must be moving in the correct direction. So in this, this case, the arrows had to be moving down toward the south, the bottom side of the screen. Continue to do this until it reaches the end point, and you can now start puzzle number two. So here's the solution for puzzle number two. Once again, if you understand the concept, pause and copy it to set your track. Boulders can roll over end slots, so that can be used as just a regular track. So we're starting from the bottom right this time. Once again, click the tiles one by one, starting from the release point to align your track to the end point. The special tiles, once again, cannot be moved. It's the same concept. We're just moving to a different end point this time. Once your track is aligned, click on the release point, this time in the bottom right to start the boulder. Once again, it will stop before the special tracks, but you just need to click on that when it's the appropriate time. The only one on this track is a conveyor belt. Make sure the conveyor belt is moving in the correct direction before you send it to the end point. Once the ball reaches the end point, it's time for puzzle number three. So you're going to be releasing this time from the top left and ending right in the center of the map. Once again, pause and copy the track. So from the release point, you're going to click on the tiles one by one. I know I'm getting very repetitive, but it's the way it's got to be for a guide. Ignore that click. All right, so the track is set. Once the track is aligned, click on the release point, top left, to release the boulder. Like earlier, it will stop before special tracks and need to be clicked on to continue. Make sure that before it goes over a white globe, the white globe track is in line with your track. And before it goes over a conveyor belt, this time it doesn't actually go over a conveyor belt, that the conveyor belt is moving in the correct direction. And that is the solution to puzzle number three. Now, the last one is what would be the most complex if you weren't following a guide. So go ahead and uh, pause and set your track. You're releasing from the bottom left and ending on the right side. So one by one, as you've done each other time. But this time we're actually taking advantage of one of the orange or yellow globes um, and switching the direction of the track as we go over it.
Once you get the track aligned, click on the release point to start the boulder. It will always stop before special tracks and needs to be clicked on for it to continue. Make sure you do not open the gates until the ball can continue. As I've said many times so far, hopefully you understand the concept by this one and you only needed to see what the solution was to proceed. If you haven't, this game's going to be hard for you. Click on the conveyor belt to open the conveyor belt track once it's going in the correct direction. And voila, we have solved the rolling boulder puzzle. That's all you needed. Thank you for watching. If you're going to continue watching and following along, I appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe. It means a lot to me. And leave a like because it helps with the algorithm. And this is probably the best guide you ever followed, so you want everybody else to know about it, right? Thank you. So once you complete the rolling ball puzzle, you're going to go into the elevator with all of Guthix's followers and be taken into this final room here where most of the stuff goes down, honestly. When you get into the room, you're going to be greeted by a variety of automatons. But surprisingly, this time, they aren't aggressive towards you. Uh, and they reveal it's because there was a Majorat in the first room, actually. They don't mean any harm to humans. Majorat being Slisk, who was kind of hiding when you were in the first room and fought the first automatons. You speak with the head automaton, who, for some reason, doesn't remember his name. But fortunately, is remembered by Juna. And she's like, no, nah, dude, stop. You're, you sound really stupid right now. You're Cress. You're Cress, you're kind of a big deal, and your minigame is one of the best ways for Divination XP to be obtained, because that skill sucks. <clears throat> Sorry, tangent. It's a little late. I apologize. Once you get done with your dialogue here with Cress, you're going to have to view the strange map to the east. It's on the east wall, and uh, it's another kind of puzzle of sorts. You have to answer four questions to get each bar to 50%. Each question, well, each answer to each question gives 25% in two bars, those being chaos, order, good, and evil. The question and answers can be found in the description as yours are likely to be different than mine. You can follow along just for an idea of, you know, how to proceed with this puzzle, but you'll probably want to go to the description and take a look at those answers down there and just match your question to the answer. I actually put a lot of work in and typing that up. Uh, copy and paste from the wiki did not work. So, yeah. Uh, so, head down there and check that out for me if you would. The way I did it is, is I just set order and good to 50% first. And then I went chaos and evil because I deal in extremes. Yep. So. I wanted to be good as possible and then as bad as possible. Okay, so I've done it. I've gotten each bar to 50%. Hopefully you've done it as well. And because you follow the guide, the great best guide you've ever seen in your life. The narrator has a beautiful voice. You become imbued with some power of gothics. Crescent and Juno are like, hey, that was pretty cool. That never happened to us. Why does this guy get special treatment? And it's because, you know, you correctly answered the balance and this whole time you've kind of been repping for your boy gothics. <clears throat> but eventually, stuff gets less happy. They realize that they're under attack and people are going to be breaking in through the little storage rooms, which are located attached to this room. So uh, me being the enthusiastic guy 
I choose the first chat option. I want to enthuse the group. I want to let them know, look, we can do this. We shouldn't be scared. Reinforce the importance of protecting the edicts because they matter and God Wars would ruin Gilenor if the gods were somehow able to return. And highlight the strengths of the group. Talk about how we have literal death on our side. Death. What are you scared of? We've also got Cress, who just looks scary. You've got a fairy and like some really creepy looking bug things. I don't even know. But yeah, you, I mean, you can probably take anybody who shows up, especially if it's like you were to get them into their own separate rooms and take them on one by one. That's probably the way to go. And that's what happens, too, because that's a good idea. Now, once you get through the dialogue here, you're going to have to assign combatants to each room. The correct order and this will give a combat boost, is Sheldar and Therisk, the fairies, in room one. That's the room with the H. In room two, you're going to want Crests and the Automatons. That's the one that looks like a one a little bit, but it's got like a dash in the middle of it. In room three, you want Death. And in the last room, you want whoever's left. The weird looking people. Once you've got that set up, you're going to want to talk to Juna and choose the first chat option I've finished setting up. Choose the first chat option I am happy with the formation for now, and you will be because it's the correct formation. It doesn't get better than that, baby. And they're gonna, the people who can't fight are gonna be like, okay, we'll support. We're gonna get these cauldrons here, which can restore your health, prayer, and probably give you a little combat boost. But you brought potions as recommended. So you don't need any of that. Maybe you do if you're low level and being crazy. It eventually pans over to show you who's in front of each door. And there's some shaking going on, which would imply that things are kind of happening. So June is going to talk to you and be like, all right, it's time. It's time to do this. And once you're ready, it's going to eventually pop up and Sheldar and Therisk are like, okay, they broke in. It's go time. So enter the southernmost door on the north side of the room by Sheldar and Therisk and be ready for combat. When you enter the door, they're going to make sure you're going to go. Say, yeah, I'm sure. Let's do this. So the first boss that you have to fight is General Grador. Protect from melee is recommended during this fight. And it should be noted that he has three special attacks, which he is going to use against you. Those special attacks are as follows. When he yells, Grador, protect. Stop attacking. Don't hit him. He's going to reflect your damage back at you. You don't want that. When he yells, Grador mad, he's going to charge at you. So just stay out of his path. And the one that you can see right now on screen is Grador smash. There's going to be some rocks that fall from the ceiling. They cast a shadow. Don't stand where the shadow is. Pretty self-explanatory. And honestly, the easiest fight you're going to get all day. It's pretty much just hit the man in the face. I literally tried running around to show you more special attacks that he had. He just wasn't doing them. So I killed him. There's a little Grador mad. You can see, uh, because I keep running around, he eventually comes at you. But I got kind of bored and decided to just hit him. So he's charging at me right now. This is what it looks like. And he's about to push me against the wall, but I got away in time. If he would have pushed me against the wall, he'd have done some pretty good damage. Fairly easy to avoid. You don't actually kill him. He, he quits. He gives up. Once he's defeated, uh, Trisk will tell you to leave and go help somebody else that can handle it conveniently once you're done. So exit the room. 
Now you're going to want to enter the northernmost door by Cress. If you need to restore your health or prayer, use the cauldrons. Cress is going to be like, are you sure? You're going to say, yes, I'm sure. Let's go. And now you have to demeet Zamoracle. Protect from magic is recommended. Of all the fights, this is probably the second hardest or most difficult. It has more mechanics, essentially. Uh, begin the fight by attacking the two dark portals that spawn on the east and west sides of the room. Zamorgo will also spawn decaying portals, which deal damage over time to you if you're near them. You're going to want to take care of those because they're going to damage you. You can also just avoid them, but if you don't take them out as they spawn and you have slow damage, it will eventually become overwhelming and you will more than likely die. The wiki also said uh, to destroy the dark dark portals to lower Zamorgul's defense. I couldn't find anything to back that up, but it could be possible. I splashed a lot on them and I was killing the dark portals and eventually I was able to hit them more. After the dark portals are destroyed... <laughs> Attack Zamorgul until he reaches approximately 70% health. When Zamorgul reaches 70%, four more dark portals will spawn. Just in the corners of the room here. Uh, kill the dark portals, because you can't kill him without killing the dark portals. But once the dark portals are dead, you can just shoot the man till he croaks. As I said earlier, killing of the decaying portals is recommended, highly recommended, to avoid taking unnecessary damage. The de decaying portals will also summon mobs, like the dark portals do, so it's just overall a good idea. And if it does lower Zamorgul's defense, that helps. So, I'm finally able to hit some Morgul in the face. I do get damaged by a decaying portal for a small period of time that spawns right by my character. You can get an idea of the type of damage you expect if you stand nearby. But I just kill it quickly and kill all of them, all of the decaying portals that spawn. Just on the off chance it does actually decrease his defense as stated on the wiki. See, it's 782 damage per tick. So, once Zamorgul eventually dies, uh, he's going to give in. Crass will be like, we got this. Go on, help the others. Once again, once the dude gives up. So exit the room once he's defeated. Now, you're going to want to go to the northernmost door on the south side of the room by death. Once again, use the cauldrons to restore health and prayer if needed. Death is going to be like, whoa, there's no going back once we go in. Are you sure? And once again, yeah, you're sure. Now, it's my favorite boss in the game. Krill Sutsroth. Protect from magic is recommended. And like Rador, Krill has three special attacks. To start, when he yells, you cannot stand against Zamorakian might. Spikes are going to spawn under you. Don't get hit by him. Just run. You will take taking damage if you stand on the spike. When he yells, run, coward, he's going to charge. Stay out of his path. And lastly, when he yells, Guthix will die in the name of Zamorak, which in my opinion is just a little aggressive. Stay out of melee range because he's going to hit you real rapidly. Now, I actually didn't have to deal with that third one. 
Mostly I only had to deal with the first one, but I imagine it does a lot of damage, so make sure you are standing far away. I would focus on running during that attack rather than attacking. Alright, once you've killed Kirill, he's going to give up. You can exit the door, because Death's going to be like, Hey, I probably got this under control now. And we have one more door to enter, the one with the creepy looking creatures. That's the southernmost door, Diara and Voluta. Health and prayer at the cauldrons if needed. But just head in, and it doesn't even ask you if you're ready. It just sends you in. So, you now have to defeat an Akra. Protect from magic is recommended. For me, this is the fight that took the longest and required the most understanding of mechanics. So, it may be the hardest fight. Uh, during this fight, an Akra is going to stun you. Make sure you have the freedom ability on your action bar and use it when you are stunned. It's the one that looks like wings. If you're not using this, use it. So, during this fight, Anakra is repeatedly going to steal your health. To stop her from stealing your health and healing herself, you're going to need to break the line of sight as fast as possible to stop the healing. Additionally, the higher your health, the more health that is stolen. So, it is advantageous to remain on low health during this fight. Try and keep it around two to 3,000 once she eventually steals that much health. Uh, and as I said earlier, do not forget to use freedom. So my idea for breaking light of sight was moving around this pillar here on the north side of the room. Whenever an Akra would start to seal my health, I would just click onto the other side. As soon as you break line of sight, she's going to teleport and you can shoot her from where you went to, to break line of sight. So I literally just hovered my mouse over the spot I wanted to walk to. As soon as I saw that she was starting to heal. She does give a verbal cue as well, as you'll see here. Zamorak, give me the power to heal. You just need to make sure you break that line of sight as quick as possible. Don't eat food. She doesn't hit hard. And as stated earlier, the lower your health, the quicker the fight, because she doesn't heal as much. So once you get her to around 50% health, this is when she actually starts to stun you. She'll teleport directly to your player's location, your character's location, and hit you with a stun and say some sort of verbal cue, such as not so fast. This is when you want to use freedom. Once she is at low enough health, she'll once again admit defeat, as the others did, and you'll be told to go back into the center room because it seems like something's going on. So, exit the room once she's defeated. Once you're back in the main room, you're going to want to go to the center and talk to Kress. You can see that there is a lot of combat going on here with what looks like followers of Sarah Doman. Ask what happened, and they're going to be like Zilliana, that tricky little queen.
she waited for us to be distracted and launched her attack on the main chamber. So he's going to be like, they're going to try and attack Juna. So you need to talk to Juna when you're ready to defend her. Um, and once you do that, these three little portals are going to spawn. You now have to protect Juna for approximately three minutes from spiritual combatants, which are going to spawn at these portals and try and kill Juna. They have fairly low HP, 1,200 each, uh, right about there. They spawn very quickly, so AoE abilities are highly recommended. During the fight, the combatants are going to attack the barriers between them and Juna. So it's up to you to repair the barriers when you see they're half broken. Now, it's not a big deal if Juna does take some damage as she has some health, but it is entirely possible to prevent her from taking any damage during this fight. So, this goes on for literally three minutes, so just continue to repair the barriers and protect Juna. They're going to cycle between spawning in the three locations, AoE abilities, and make sure that you are maintaining your health. Well done, Juna survived, and now you get this wonderful cutscene of Zilliana coming into the main room and going after our boy Cress. She thinks she is so smart. She's like, ha ha, I gotcha. You think that I didn't know that you're gothics? And Cress is like, you're so stupid. You're literally dumb. Look at you, woman. This is funny to me uh, because he's not gothics. And then, boom, in walks Azandra. And all of the followers of Zeros. And they're like, ha, huh, we used you. We're going to get to Guthix first. So, after the cutscene's over, talk to Azandra. Azandra's like, we're literally going to kill Zeros. So... Do something about it. So Yana's like, no, I'm going to do it. They decide to trap Zilliana. So she can't go do it. And once you get through the end of this dialogue, 
is going to be presented with a choice. Choose the second chat option. I want to protect Guthix. I will side with the Guthixians. After you make your choice, the strange map on the east wall is going to break. They don't know why it happened. I don't know why my game glitched out. Look at that little fractal glitch on the mini map. But once you get done with this dialogue tree, you need to enter the shattered wall. Within, you will have to dodge rolling balls of fire. And if you don't dodge them, you're going to take considerable damage. It is possible you're going to die a bunch of times before you do this. So bank all your gear if you want to save on death costs. Uh, you can also watch and watch what I do before attempting. I got it on my first try, so it wasn't that hard for me. The easiest method for me was to follow the burning balls themselves as they take the correct path. There's also going to be some stuff falling from the ceiling, but just avoid it. Uh, and don't try and search. I tried. Doesn't work. So, yeah, beware. I almost got hit by this ball right here at the end, but once you make it to the bottom, you're going to get this cutscene. You did it. You made it to Guthix. You protected Guthix. Nothing bad can happen now, right? Right? Wrong. You can see the excitement with my little mouse movements there. In pops that shadowy figure from earlier with that ugly face, Slisk. He's got this fancy weapon, and he straight up just shocks Guthix. And turns his little chest thing into lava. And teleports out like it's no big deal. Your character is like, oh crap, Guthix. And Guthix is like, okay, come on, get over here, quick, quickly, I'm dying. So I walk to the platform near Guthix. You need to go as far east as possible down this little stone stairway. He's like, I'm Guthix. And you're like, I know. And he's like, I know you know, I'm Guthix. He tells you I'm dying, but he needs to show you things and teach you things and give you gifts because he's the god of balance and balance needs to be maintained. So he's going to teleport you to his home world, which is in his memories, which he has brought you to because he slowed down time. And this is the only way he can tell you things with enough time. So, but he makes it a really complicated way where he teleports about and you have to go get more dialogue. So after this initial dialogue ends, you're going to want to walk north or west to the platform, and then north to the next platform, where Guthix teleported to. Talk to Guthix on this platform. And he tells you a little story about the Naragi. You can see that they're dead nearby. Kind of sad. And he tells you about how the world he's from, people were always fighting. And the gods were always fighting, and it was kind of dumb. Just constant death, because people were upset. So you're going to walk east to the next platform. And talk to Guthix. And he's going to talk to you about this big Scaragoth guy. Who was also a god. And is the first god he killed himself. He managed to obtain a god killing weapon. Which was the shattered blade that we discovered in the first room. And he used it to kill this god. Because he was tired of fighting. After this dialogue tree ends, walk to the north. Guthix will be standing near... This little wall here, next to a dead body. And he's like, yeah, we just, gods, as gods, we just made things. Spawned new races so they could fight for us. Well, 
Once this dialogue tree ends, walk north to Guthix once again. Standing now by a light. Talk to Guthix. And once this dialogue ends, walk west to Guthix, who's halfway up the little hill here. Talk to Guthix on the hill. He tells you no. He's almost dead. It's time to finish up. So one more time, walk west up the remainder of the hill. Talk to Guthix. And this is the remnants of his family home where he grew up. This is what he can remember. He will eventually invite you in, and when he does, walk into the building and talk to Guthix. This is the final dialogue tree with Guthix. It's kind of sad. Man lays down to die. He wants to give you a gift, though. He wants to bestow upon you the power to control the gods. So choose the first chat option. I will do as you ask. I will use your powers to protect Gilenor from the gods. He's like, thank you. Thank you so much. I can rest easy. Then the man lays down. And then he literally dies. Alright, so you're teleported back in front of a dead Guthix. And all the followers of Guthix are now nearby. Well, everybody's kind of there. They're like, we didn't know this, he was going to do that. Choose the second chat option, the gods can return, because they're like, well, what happened? And followed up with the first chat option, there will not be another war. Because Guthix bestowed upon you the power to prevent that. And you're going to prevent that, right? Right. So they ask what's happening. And what is happening is Sarah Doman just inserts himself into the situation. He's like, y'all need to just go. He teleports all the Zerosian followers out, but he wants to talk to you. So, talk to Sarah Doman. He's like, it's very sad Guthix had to die, but his idea of balance was incorrect. It did not align with my ideals. He's going to be like, do you know who I am? He's going to be like, of course I know who you are. You're a god. You're Sarah Doman. I don't know what I think of you, though. And he's going to be like, all right, well, cool. I think you need to leave, though. And he's going to try and teleport you out. But <laughs> doesn't work. Doesn't work because you're now the world guardian. With powers bestowed upon you by Guthix. Which is the first shot option. He gave me some of his power. So I can guard the world against gods. Rub it in. Sarah Dolman cannot control you. He's going to be like, alright. Well, that kind of sucks. And then he's going to teleport himself out. Once he does that, talk to Juna. This will complete the quest. However... There are additional rewards if you meet the requirements, so continue watching as I will show you how to obtain those rewards. Not like there wasn't already enough, there's like a million XP you get from completing this quest, as well as the five abilities, which are fantastic. But there's additional rewards, so Juna teleports you out once you close the quest dialog screen. But if you want those additional rewards right now, you want to head right back into the excavated entrance. So, for starters, with 90 prayer, you can pay respects at the monument for 100,000 prayer XP. 
with 74 fire making. You can light the torches around the shrine. There are four up top that I do right now. And there's a fifth one down below on the main platform near Gothics. These are 10,000 fire making XP each for a total of 50,000. You can also offer chronicle fragments at the shrine for the of Guthix title. You need 100. <clears throat> and if you've completed all the suggested quest requirements, you can speak to the high druid for a sixth age circuit ring as well as a title. So I go down and light the final torch. And boom, baby, you got all the rewards. If this guide helped you, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment. Let me know that you liked the video. Check out my other videos. Use my quest guides. Recommend my quest guides. Uh, it would mean a lot to me if you did that. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.